How's it, how's it guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Frames Magazine, the wonderful sponsors of your Wednesday videos. Finding style in photography was such a unusual path for me. I, when I started off back in the early 90s taking photographs seriously at, at the photo school, I had some ideas in mind. I wanted to be like David Bailey or Robert Maplethorpe. And I was, I was kind of vaguely aware of Anton Corbein at that time. So there were, there were three people who were sort of influencing the way that I took photographs. And I thought, if I keep copying them, if I make work that looks specifically like them, then I will find that my own images remind me of, of, of their work and then I will have a style. My photographs will be distinctive and stand out. But I was going about all this completely the wrong way. Copying people's photography is, is good. It's a good exercise. It helps you break down learning about light and the you know, way photographers approach ideas. And, and we did a lot of that at photo school where we were given assignments to, you know, to copy various photo photographers or take pictures in a certain way. And that introduced me to so many different influences and styles and approaches that unknowingly I was starting to pick up things that seemed to work for me, although I wasn't aware of them at the time. I would sit there in the color lab at photo school and I'd put through a, a print in those little roller machines go up and down and I, memory serve, they used to take about 12 minutes. If, if, you are, if you're familiar with the RA4 process, let me know. It's somewhere in that region, I think. Or maybe I'm confusing with the process we went before. But anyway, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And in that little waiting room, there were stacks of shelves full of photographic magazines, much like frames, books from the, the Time Life series. There's, you know, how to photograph things. A big thing of 12 volumes. It was amazing. You could flick through these, these ideas. And all these brochures and pamphlets from various companies trying to sell their stuff that had been accumulated over the years. And, and it was that process of looking at images, of digesting them and coming back to them again and again that started to influence my style. And this was before the internet. This is before you could go online and you know, look at images. And, and it's been great because I've been able to find loads of people whose work I enjoy. And I go, wow, that, that's pretty cool. But they never have the lasting impact, I feel, on my own style that was laid down by looking at images in print of not just going, I quite like that idea, and then filing it away in some Dropbox or a Pinterest thing or something and then going, well, I'll come back to when I've got some, I need some ideas for a shoot, I'll come back to that and I'll go there. Because I never do. I was, I was cleaning out a bunch of hard drives the other day and having a look what's on them. And I, I find folders and folders of like inspiration images and ideas for shoots. And I copied and I never did anything with them. They haven't really implanted my, some of them I look at and go, why, what? What was, what was that? Why, why was I drawn to this particular photograph? But when you have magazines, printed images, you can come back to, then you start, I find, to have these photos implant themselves within you. It's like at the back of frames, there is this, this picture of an elephant who's there every day, I think as a sponsor um, or some advertising. Oh no, it's not to read frames. So that's, you know, that, that's why it's there all the time. And that photograph, is starting to embed itself in my mind because I see it quite a lot. Now, one of the things that I do with frames, and we talk about this, I look at these photographs almost cold, as it were. So by cold, I mean, I haven't really flicked through the magazine previously. This is the first time I'm going through it in, in any sort of depth. And I'm, I'm looking for images that stand out. And I kind of, you know, for me to go, well, okay, what? Well, that's something that I, I like. Maybe I can, not appropriate it, but like a magpie, take that idea and file it away up here, which I'll be reminded of every time I go through the book 
or the, the magazine again. So this particular image here, that's, that's a very striking portrait uh, by a photographer called Trevor Cole of a, of a gentleman in South Sudan. And what I like about that, when I look at that is, first of all, the angle is very interesting. He's kind of looks slightly above and the guy's looking up. So what a wonderful compositional aspect that if I saw more of this, then I would kind of go, okay, that's something that if it resonates with me internally and, I, and it goes through the, the, the process of all the filters in my head and comes out through my camera, then that's helping to influence my style. And it's always a fun game too, to kind of look at the photographers in this and think about who may have influenced them. Obviously, in this case with Trevor Cole, a lot of this work reminds me of some Steve McCurry ideas. There's also Sebastio Salgado in here. Loads of, of little influences that I, I would hope, you know, that I'm, I'm correct in thinking that Trevor's drawing from these people and then maybe he likes the, you know, the comparison. But it does go to show that when you are looking through somebody's photography and you start analyzing it like this, it gives you an insight, not only into how they are arriving at their own particular style, that you know that you get a feel for what sort of things work for you. Rather than having an image just go flick, flick, flick past the screen, you get time to spend with the photograph. Like this photograph here by a photographer called Joe Brunenberg. I, I love this kind of stuff, very angular. I mean, you know, regular followers of the channel will know that this kind of work is absolutely what I, uh, you know, I, I adore. And it reminds me of those two German photographers whose name totally escapes me right now, who photographed water towers as well. And I, I go, do you know, that's, I love doing that. So when you find somebody whose work does resonate with you. We go, ah, that's exactly what I'd like to do. You can also take heart that that inner idea, that inner idea of your style, of what you feel is natural in taking your photograph, is okay. I, you know, for a long time, I, I thought that when I was taking images, that they had to be in a certain fashion. That, that you you weren't really able to to break out and make your own style. You had to photograph in the style of, rather than, as I found out later on, just photographing how it feels natural for you. And then you then you've developed a style. When somebody year, a few years ago, you know, we were looking at some photographs, and and we're all portrait photographers, do family portrait work, and. People you know, were showing some images around having a chat online and I showed some of my work and they go, oh, well, yeah, well, that's Alex. That's your style. I, oh, you're immediately because you're, that's different. I, we could tell that's you because over the years in my lighting and all that sort of stuff, I've been drawn towards a more painterly film, a more naturalistic, if you want to call it that, style, which is totally at odds with where I wanted to get when I started. And that's probably because over the over the years, I, obviously my tastes changed, my influences changed. I built more of a, 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 a library of images on which to draw inspiration from that were from physical sources. If I look at the work here of Julia McIver, I'm seeing some really wonderful abstract photographs. I love the, the, the shape and the feel and it, everything is very I, I, uniform, sort of. I think uniform is like a, like a cool word, but that uniform implies, certainly as I'm concerned, it feels like it's just, everything is regimented, but it's not. It has a life and a vibrancy to it. And then when you start scraping beneath the, you know, the, the surface with these and you, we play that game about yeah, it's what's Julie's influences, where are they coming from? We pick up people like Ernst Haas, we pick up people like Hal Eastman. There's a little bit of, of uh, Pete Turner in there, you know, with, with the use of colour, albeit these are more pastel colours, whereas Pete Turner's colour was quite bold. And, and you kind of go, you know, at the moment, these are not really 
influence me. They're, they're not something I would sit and go, okay, well, I'm gonna take some of that and add it to my, my style bank. But if I look at them enough over time, there may be some hidden bits that come in there that, that will seep into my consciousness about having to do this. Because I, I love my style. I, I love the way that I photograph now. And if, if I had to go back and say, look, there's a process for doing this, there isn't. Some people, well, I say there isn't. For me, there wasn't a specific step-by-step -step process. It was more, I just looked at photographs. I looked at images and I try to keep as many that I enjoyed physically with me that I could come back to and visit. So maybe I do have a process. But that was, you know, it worked for me. It helped me get to my point in, in photography that I, I went from being a copyist to being somebody who felt confident enough to kind of go and just take my own photographs in my own way Although I do, I do still occasionally sort of worry about what other people think about it. But, you know, that's, that's imposter syndrome and that's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, there's, that's a whole other story. And at the end, well, at the end I say at the beginning, because I'm flicking through this back to front, <laughs> there is a photographer called Art Wolf. Now, I'm going to read out his statement at the beginning here. Because I think it's an important when you know when looking at these particular photographs, is that he says I'm constantly trying to bridge the gap between natural history and art. Now, thanks to my art background, I see art everywhere. Impressionism and abstract expressionism have become a part of my visual vocabulary. Pattern, texture, and line are rooted subliminally in my technique as I photograph landscape, cultures, and even wildlife. Now, what I find really captivating about these particular photographs is the way that then they are portraits but they're not portraits of somebody and they have a, a slightly let's call it I'm going to call it like a kind of a, a disquieting ethereal sort of feel to it because they feel to me in regards to how I'm interpreting them that they have something that's a little bit otherworldly about them and, and and that's a fantastic i love that feeling that they're giving me so i kind of go well if i like that feeling if i wanted to take some of that feeling and maybe incorporate it into my own photography you know going back to this idea of a magpie you know taking bits and bits and bobs then i would go okay well what i what i do like is straight to the camera you know the, these these people are straight to the camera the use of very graphic lines there's this photograph of called pigment study 63 with those people spinning around that you know wow what a really again striking image they just I, I love the ideas here and and i want to come back to these i want to find more of arts photography to you know really get to grips with it and i don't mean sort of analyzing and thinking about you know the compositions and stuff but just letting it seep into my consciousness I used to do that so much with the photographs when I was younger that I, I can't remember where my photography started to end and somebody else's started to begin. I found a, a place where my style seemed to just naturally evolve and, 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 I, and that feels like it's kind of the whole point is that style will naturally evolve. It, there isn't a shortcut to style. It is just what's already inside you that is then enhanced. There was there's aspects in my photography that has never that have never changed. The the angular nature of things, but over time, I have found little bits and bobs that have built up to the photographs that feel natural for me. That when somebody looks at them, they go, "That is an Alex photograph." Now, I mentioned imposter syndrome in photography earlier, and if you want to find out a little bit more about how to get to grips and deal with that, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.